Okay, uh, I'd like to welcome everybody to this uh, joint uh, EFP in the cloud with eSIM presentation. I'm uh, Klaus, I'm the EFP administrator in Norwegian. I've been managing the EFP systems for close to 12 years now. Uh, together we will present a cost efficient EFP solution an end-to-end -end solution, a managed solution. So uh, I hope you enjoy our presentation. Hi, my name is Thomas Jo. Um, I'm the Enterprise Product Manager at GeekSky. Uh, in this role, I'm responsible for the product roadmap and the evolution of our enterprise roadmap for enterprise customers. I'm very happy to join Klaus and Frederick in bringing you uh, this solution overview and being part of this presentation. Thanks, and I'm Frederick Udegaard, and I'm an industry expert at uh, Microsoft in, in EMEA. And I'm going to share a little bit what we see from uh, industry side and from Microsoft side when it's come to EFB solutions, airline solutions, and collaboration in the airline and airport industry. So there are some uh, challenges that we have seen in the last years when you're rolling out modern EFB uh, solutions. On one side, you have the goals of the employees. They really want to have the freedom to collaborate and uh, work with information in an easy way whenever, uh, wherever they are. And of course, uh, EFB users, they are extremely mobile. They fly around the, the, the world. Sometimes they take part of a um, uh, flight briefing. Next uh, minute they are doing a takeoff. And after that, of course, they manage uh, the aircraft in, in a secure way up, up, in, uh, up in the air. So there are some contradictions and, and, and of course between the employee goals and what you need to deliver as an airline company or from the IT the department and the IT goals. And there is high priority on, on protecting the data, especially nowadays in, in tough COVID times, hackers have trying to use this crisis to get access to corporate data, to passenger data and other sensitive uh, data. We also know that uh, you need to have access. Uh, you need it as an IT organization, let your users and give you uh, the possibility for users to access the back office and then the data whenever they are out in flying. Maybe there are some urgent things that need to be resolved. So the people uh, and the pilots need to have access to the data. So then, as you can believe, you need to have control of, of your systems, your devices, your data, but at the same time, you need to stay innovative. This industry is uh, in immense uh, transformation and lots of innovation coming into if modern EFB solutions. But if you if you do it uh, in, in the right way and, and really focus on three key areas, I would say in the EFB solutions, and that's what we will hear about more today, it's really about to, to giving a full solutions and integrated applic applications to the EFB users. At the same time, you manage your, your devices. It can be uh, Windows tablets, it can be iPads, it can be Android phones back in the cabin for uh, doing the interactions between cabin crew and, and the passengers. They can be rag devices down in the ground for maintenance people or, or bag uh, managers uh, and so on. And then you need to, to protect your data. You need to give this uh, connectivity that I mentioned before. And there, uh, things really coming together uh, in today, today's EFB environment. And uh, for instance, we can deliver, uh, and the gig sky can deliver mobile connectivity uh, around the world with global roaming. And in fact, gig sky is one of the, the key partners of Microsoft. And, and Microsoft uh, uh, Surface and the Gigs, uh, Gigs Guy uh, eSIM capabilities come preloaded on many of our Surface devices. So really happy to see this uh, partnership between Microsoft and, and Gigs Guy. So 
So one important tool, as you will see later on, when, when Klaus go into into the details of, of the solution, it's of course uh, uh, the, the the device management. But it's not only about device management nowadays. Uh, this full environment have moved forward. It's really about identity. It's about, of course, the device, but also about the applications. So the right user at the right time have access to the right applications at the right security level. And that uh, uh, you will see uh, later on here when Klaus talks about their solution, how it comes, comes to life. So, of course, we will talk about EFB today and really deep dive into the EFB solutions. But it's also important to, to highlight what's going on in the industry when it com comes about collaboration. In today's workflows, the data flows from the cockpit, maybe down into the cabin, maybe back to the cockpit, from the cockpit down to the ground, maybe out to, ma to maintenance people, and maybe back up again to the cockpit. So lots of collaboration going on, and that's why it's so important to have this global connectivity, have this roaming, to have connectivity both just up in the air, but also down on the ground uh, directly when you when you touch down. Then of course it's more and more integrations uh, between different stakeholders in the industry on the ground. It can be everything from maintenance people to cargo that racing in, in importance now in COVID times to the whole ecosystem at, at the airport. It can be about tax-free stores or passenger flow, security, and, and so on. And one example of, of uh, an, a partner application that, that, that we are bringing to market now together with, with a partner called CETA is uh, it's, it's called Mission Control. And the, there they can have sending Teams messages from the cockpit down to the operation centers, out to the gate or out to the ramp, and then back up in the air again. So it's really about give this possibility to, to close the loop of, of information and collaboration around, around the flight. And that's, of course, uh, an add-on you can have to the, to the pure EFB functionalities. So with that, I want to, to hand over to Klaus, and, and Klaus will give you uh, uh, some great examples of uh, what they have done in the EFB space and the long and successful journey uh, they have been achieved uh, when it's come to their EFB rollout. Klaus. Thank you, Fredrik. Uh, brilliant intro there. Uh, I thought I'll uh, start off by just talking about the explosion that we've seen in the EFB market in the past 10 or 12 years. Uh, I think uh, a lot of our viewers and listeners uh, recognize the device up to the top left there, the old Navero teabag solution. It uh, weighed a ton and it uh, cost about a year's salary for just one device. Uh, and uh, where we are today with a iPad or a Surface tablet, even Android devices that only cost uh, anywhere from a few hundred US up to the more rugged devices, which can be a little more costly, of course. But uh, we've come a long way in a very short time. So it's really amazing to, to have been a part of this explosion in the EFB industry. Uh, previously, or up to now, we have been sort of defined with the various SDC mounting solutions from uh, vendors like Navero, Scan Avionics. Uh, they've been costly. They've not been that friendly when it comes to replacing the devices. So... Uh, I thought I'd use the opportunity today to, to talk about what I believe is the EFB future, the PIVO mounting device, which uh, is a very cost-efficient launch of an EFB program today. I mean, if I were to start uh, the introduction of an EFB or to replace an EFB system, I would definitely go with the PIVO solution today. 
It's as simple as one mount, it's a mounting plate and a click connect system that are universal. So it means that no matter what kind of device you can you have, you can simply have an surface EFB in the cockpit, but it also allows your pilots to actually connect their iPads or Android devices as well, if needed. And the beauty of this is that you, if you already have an SSC solution by another vendor, you can actually get just a pivot click on plate mounted to those SDCs. So uh, I think this is a future proof system. Even if you, no matter if you start a new EFB program or if you upgrade your current EFB program, uh, this is definitely the route that I would take today. In uh, Norwegian, we've come a long way when it comes to EFB and the deployment of EFB software. Back in the days, we used to spend hours in the lab installing, reinstalling, troubleshooting. We, we spent a lot of time on this, so, so uh, we came to a point where we got in touch with Microsoft and said, listen, this is how we do it. What can you do to help us? We need to be more efficient. We need to have a more lean system a system that doesn't necessarily require EFB personnel to be involved, but where we actually can push more and more out to the user. And that's when they got back and said, hey, Windows Autopilot, that's something you really should start looking at. So from uh, spending hours on each EFB, we are now down to between 16 and 20 minutes from that's from unboxing a new device until it's ready to be used as a fully functional EFB. So with with Windows Autopilot, there's no need to re-image or manually set up anything before handing them out to your users. You simply have your hardware vendor automatically add all the new devices you purchase into Windows Autopilot, meaning they belong to your organization. And then you or your IT department will customize the various users and the rights, whatever policies they're supposed to have. And you can technically just ship the device straight to the end user or to the pilot. Let's say if you get a call from a pilot, he's at a hotel somewhere far away from your location, and his EFB is broken. Then you can actually ship a brand new device boxed straight to his hotel. He opens it, connects it to the internet, and within 15 to 20 minutes, He's got a brand new EFB fully installed with all application, all the documents from Wistair, your charting application from Jeppesen or whatever your charting provider is, and you're ready to go. Uh, I actually have done a little recording of the autopilot setup that I would like to show you. So here the user have gotten a brand new device, connected it to the internet. As you see, it uh, quickly gets recognized within the Intune and the autopilot system, and it starts the device preparation. Sets up the device, installs the main operating system as a start, And there you are with the standard Windows desktop. That's not exactly what we need in this case. So it performs a reboot. It runs a couple of uh, automated scripts that defines what profiles we should have, what programs we should have, and last but not least, what to keep or what to remove. 
especially with an uh, EFP device, you typically don't want uh, stuff like uh, email. Maybe you don't need the office applications. For sure, you don't want to send out the uh, all the games to uh, to the EFP. There's no use for that. So we automate a number of script of scripts that you see running in the background, preparing this to become a fully functional EFB. We install all the uh, updates we need. We can even start pushing profiles for the wireless networks around, whether it's work, onboard network, or various hotel networks that your company utilizes. All of this can be pushed within Intune. Also, any kind of uh, certificate or other authentication methods that you use to either connect to various uh, systems or simply to the company network or to your EFP servers. Okay, uh, that was the video. So there are four types of autopilot deployment. We have self-deployment for kiosk, digital signage, or a shared device. We have the white glove experience where IT staff can pre-provision a Windows 10 PC so that it's fully configured and business ready. We have Autopilot for existing devices that enables you to easily deploy the latest version of Windows 10 to your existing devices, or simply use a driven mode for traditional users. Uh, what you obviously need to do this is an Intune subscription. You need uh, Windows Automatic Enrollment enabled and an Azure Active Directory Premium subscription. Uh, Frederick briefly touched base on the uh, device management. As you see here, we can manage devices by pretty much all platforms. So whether you have Windows devices, iPads, Macs, or Android devices, all of them can be managed within Intune. So that means uh, you can manage both your let's say your uh, crew's personal iPads or company issued, but personally issued iPads and your EFBs, whether they are Windows or iPads, all of that can be controlled within Intune. In the video, you saw all the various installation scripts that were running. Uh, here we have the different applications. We have uh, .NET, we have auto logon scripts, activation scripts. We want to disable the sound card because there's no use for sound in the cockpit. We install our uh, document Vister program, our EFB software, and uh, we import some certificates amongst other things, o Boeing's OPT for our 7-8 pilots, etc. Same goes for uh, the various settings. You might want to remove access to the control panel or to the Wi-Fi settings. You might want to lock down cellular settings or put in a number of cellular profiles. You want to disable maybe power settings, disable hibernation mode, stuff like that. All of that can be done through different scripts within Intune. And with Intune, you can choose to be 100% cloud-based or co-managed with configuration manager in Intune. As you've seen, you can set various rules and configure settings both on personal and organizational devices to access data and networks. 
You can deploy and authenticate apps on devices, on premises and mobile. And as also Frederick highlighted in these COVID times, or any time for that matter, uh, protect your company information by controlling the way users access and share the information. And of course, be sure that devices and applications are compliant with your security requirements. Uh, the manage of devices. Uh, it's so important nowadays to, to be able to control all the devices, to get an overview, to ensure that they have the same configuration and meet the security and health standards you have set or the IT department have set. Uh, like you want to block certain things or uh, enable other stuff. As I mentioned, push certificates, Wi-Fi network settings, VPN settings, see different reports on the users and the devices so that they are compliant or not compliant. And what I find to be one of the most important parts is the ability to remove data if a device is lost, stolen, or not used anymore. So this means if I get a report that a, an AFB have been stolen, lost at the airport, I can just go into Intune with a simple click. I can tell Intune to wipe everything and make this device unusable as soon as you get contact with it. And that is really important nowadays. So with that, I'll hand it over to Thomas, who will explain a little bit about the eSIM and the connectivity. Thank you, Klaus. OK, so um, so now that uh, Frederick and Klaus have covered uh, aspects around the EFP devices and uh, that of uh, device management using MDM, I'll, I'll look at giving some details around the cellular connectivity solutions for the devices. Um, uh, you know, the, the traditional way of uh, giving uh, connectivity has been using plastic SIM cards. Um, and as with most aspects related to aircrafts being time sensitive, uh, data connectivity for EFB and airline, airline applications too um, is required to be available within minutes of landing in a country. Um, and given the limited time window available for pilots on the ground for you know, flight preparations, um, it's really key to have a connection established that provides good bandwidth, right? And, and, and this, of course, has to come with worldwide coverage and competitive pricing. Um, and from a you know, uh, user perspective, um, the last thing that you wanted the pilot to be doing is uh, you know, having to fiddle around with the device, trying to get the data connection going with an appropriate local network. So, so anything which had to be done to get a data connection working had to be with you know, minimal and, you know, and preferably no user uh, intervention. Um, so as you can imagine, you know, based on what I said, you know, these are pretty demanding requirements. Now, the good news is that you know, when, we, when we at GeekSky build the network, we took these as being our key requirements. So we started with creating a geo-redundant data centers, uh, enabled state-of-the-art, uh, truly global network. And unlike many of the traditional mobile operators, uh, GeekSky built a really a multi imz based uh, global solution. So, so what does this mean? Um, um, so it just means that with our SIM cards, we were able to offer our customers a much wider range of local networks worldwide along with better pricing. Uh, and, and if you have a question about, okay, what about from a user perspective? Does having a SIM card with multi MZ mean more work for the end user? So the answer is no. Um, so the actual action of determining which roaming partner to use in that location and switching to it is all done automatically, right? So what I described so far has been the traditional way of providing uh, using plastic SIM cards. Now enter the world of eSIMs. Um, so for, for, for those of you who are not familiar with uh, what eSIM is, so eSIM um, uh, really stands for embedded SIM. Very broadly, there are two parts to it. There is an eSIM container, which is a physical component. And then uh, you have the eSIM profiles or, or really the brain. Um, so the devices 
which are stated to be eSIM standard compliant will have the eSIM containers built into those devices and thus making it eSIM capable, right? Uh, whereas the eSIM profiles uh, are uh, delivered electronically over the air. Now, the one important aspect of the technology and standard is that uh, the standards allow a single device to have multiple eSIM profiles on it. So what does this mean? It, it is almost, uh, it is like virtually carrying multiple traditional SIM cards. So in the old way, to, when you had to swap between operators, one would have to swap plastic SIM cards. However, in the case of eSIM, the swapping of SIMs is now all done digitally. So all you really need to do is to switch between profiles on the device. It's as simple as that. So as you can see, this really brings in an opportunity to provide a completely digital experience to the user. No more physical SIM inventory management and no logistics around it. Um, at, at, at GeekSky, we were one of the early adopters of the eSIM technology. So the standard itself um, has been around since 2016. And as far as consumer devices were concerned, the real push for adoption of eSIM into devices came when Apple launched uh, eSIM enabled iPhones in 2018. And um, GeekSky was at the forefront of this. GeekSky was one of the first official partners announced by Apple during that launch. Subsequently, when other major players like Microsoft and Google brought our devices in their ecosystems, we further worked with them to enable a support for them on, on, on our platform. So you can really appreciate you know, our expertise with this technology. From an industry trends point of view, um, you know, what we are seeing is, uh, though the standard has been there for a few years, but we are now seeing a, an increase in the adoption of the standard. Uh, with this, um, we are seeing increased number of devices with eSIM support becoming available. Uh, this includes all major players, Apple, Microsoft, Google. So this is a great opportunity uh, for any company to provide uh, a really uh, good user experience. Like, like I was stressing, eSIM allows us to provide a completely digital user experience. Now, now you may be wondering, okay, now that you know, with eSIM, we will not have any, any more aspects related, related to physical in, in inventory management and you know, uh, asset management aspects around physical SIMs. But um, yes, we have eliminated that, but it does introduce some new processes. Re remember I spoke about profiles, uh, which are really the brains. Um, so what this now introduces is, uh, we the, these profiles will now have to be ordered and tracked. Activation codes, which are uh, you you can uh, imagine activation codes as being like a key to install the profiles on those um, physical containers. So they need to be managed through an appropriate MDM. Um, you know, so the eSIMs which are delivered by Geeksky are pretty much vendor agnostic um, as far as MDMs are concerned. However, we are seeing that you know Microsoft Intune. Um, is becoming the de facto in a lot of a uh, lot of our customers. So, so we are very happy to have been working with Microsoft um, uh, in this space. And um, last but not the least, the finally, you know, while we have got the profiles tracked, we have got the profiles installed. It is also very important to have the correct profile enabled on the device. Happy, great experience is not just about making easy to set things up. Uh, all this while we've been speaking about how to set things up uh, in, in a simplified manner. But post that, it should also be simple to operate and manage post the initial setup. Um, from a connectivity perspective, uh, this includes um, being able to have um, effective SIM lifecycle management, usage management, reporting capabilities. All these are very important, both from an efficiency point of view and and from a cost uh, cost measurement point of view. So, so this is where a tool like uh, GeekSky Enterprise Manager plays an important role. Um, it has all these capabilities and more. Um, the advantage of GeekSky Enterprise Manager is you can manage both your plastic SIMs and eSIMs on the same platform. Um, when I started, I did mention about uh, the multi eSIM capability and how it uh, brings in 
various uh, advantages, specifically being being able to uh, improve coverage or um, so the being able to offer much larger plethora of network operators uh, across the world, as well as being able to bring in price competitiveness. So the ESIM standard uh, does allow to have multiple profiles on a single ESIM device. However, it still requires the user to manually switch between them. So the next evolution that, that we have been working on is how to bring in uh, the same advantages that we had as part of multi imc based solution uh, in the traditional SIM cards into the eSIM world. And this we are targeting for, for, for uh, consumer devices. So what this will allow is when you introduce multi imc based eSIM profiles, we will then be able to eliminate the need for users to manually switch profiles on their device. They can then be fully managed remotely without any intervention from the user. Um, so as you can imagine, uh, in, in addition to bringing this digital experience, again, remotely controlled, we can also, again, offer much wider range of networks as well as uh, better pricing. Um, at GeekSky, we are, we are already working on this, and we expect to have uh, this available in the first half of next year. Um, no, though the eSIM technology itself is pretty standard, uh, but there are obviously some nuances and uh, aspects of behavior of devices for each device ecosystem. And given the number of diverse device ecosystems available, you can imagine that to have a multi uh, MZ eSIM supported and all of them can be challenging. So, so at Kicksky, what we are looking at is we are really looking at doing an incremental rollout, looking at the, the various uh, device ecosystems and bringing them out, out incrementally. So I will now pass it on to uh, Frederick and Klaus to go on. Thank you. Super. Yeah, thanks a lot, Thomas, and and uh, uh, thank you, thank you, Klaus. I think we have seen really a, a solution with uh, end-to-end EFB uh, implementation. So everything from installing the EFB hardware, the application, keeping it up to live, high security, and then of course the important uh, connectivity with, with, with the global roaming. And that's really where we see the uh, where the industry is going. It should be easy for the end users. They should have the right solution at the right time with the, with the right uh, support. And uh, that's, I think we will just see more and more of when we now uh, managing these challenging times in, in, the, in the airline industry, but we, when we are ready to go again, it's really, really important to have these kind of solutions ready to support uh, your pilots, but all kind of staff uh, in, in your company. So Klaus, uh, yeah, what's, what do you see is the, the next step for you? Is it uh, continue on, on, on the focus on building an integrated solution for, for EFB solution for, for your for your pilots and your users? Yeah, definitely. Uh, like I said, we, we've seen the advantages of, uh, of uh, using Intuness as your device management. Uh, we have uh, started using the autopilot function for the EFB. It's something that we're definitely now uh, looking into transferring to our our uh, end users or our or all our, our employees, especially nowadays when the term office is uh, doesn't exist anymore. Pretty much all our employees are working from home, so then it really becomes uh, efficient to be able to ship a device straight to them rather than have them come into the office, mess with an. Uh, a device that have already been touched by several IT technicians and so on. So, uh, and, and the same with uh, with iPads. Once we deploy iPads to the pilots, Intune will definitely be a, uh, a key part of that as well. Obviously, with an integrated GigSky eSIM in all devices, and as uh, Thomas mentioned. Uh, then you have the ability to to give them 
certain profiles or to give them a certain amount of data to use, all of this can be easily controlled. And um, yeah, I just want to take the opportunity to thank both you, Frederick, Microsoft, and Thomas Gigsky for the amazing collaboration we've had over the EFP concept. I think it's really been beneficial for all of us and hopefully for a lot of other airlines out there. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Klaus. Yeah. And then Thomas, I mean, uh, like Klaus said, uh, everybody is starting to get mobile, mobile then nowadays and working from home or <laughs> working uh, when they're out flying. And, and I mean, and I can believe you also seeing more and more IoT devices coming in into your uh, solutions portfolio. I mean, with sensors and uh, both on the aircrafts and also out at airports and so on. Any, anything special you see regarding the IoT trend and how it links into these kind of solutions? Yeah, absolutely, Frederick. I mean, uh, 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 with these new technologies coming around, right? It's uh, now it's not just about connecting people anymore. Uh, the new reality that we're going to live in is is going to have a lot more integrated devices. And and with the advent of new technologies like 5G, we spoke about eSIM. We are seeing devices of different form factors coming in. A lot more op uh, opportunities will be available for companies and solution providers and partners to really come up with solutions which you know uh, many years ago we wouldn't have we have uh, could have even imagined right but but uh, what we need to keep in mind is uh, this will also introduce a certain amount of additional complexity especially in you know troubleshooting issues when they occur so so the need to uh, do better collaboration between solution partners uh, becomes even more important um, klaus did uh, uh, speak about uh, how the collaboration that you know Norwegian Microsoft and Geeksky uh, and with the solution that we created so, so I mean, th these are the such collaborations will become almost like um, like a full, like a hallmark or a, or a blueprint for for future future collaborations between companies right? so so that is something which uh, I would strongly uh, advise that whenever somebody selects partners it's really important to have partners who have collaborative approach in their DNA because and of course who understand this te uh, technology space and the industry space. So definitely Frederick and a lot more opportunities uh, in integrated devices as well. Super. Yeah, thank you. And I think it's it's a big shift now in, in the in the industry when when all of us deliver like solutions uh, and uh, when when you have really the integrated solutions, you can't have partners like blaming each other and so on. Everybody need to jump in, quickly solve the solutions and so on. And I think that's that's what we have seen really good good partnership in these projects and and, and many others to come. So yeah, thank you a lot. So anybody, any last words before we we round off today's webinar? I think we can take some questions. Yeah, if absolutely. There are some questions out there. So, but thank you. Yeah, let's take some questions. So, yeah, thanks you for for the time, and uh, let uh, please let the, the questions coming, and uh, uh, a big thank you to to the organizers. So, yeah, thank you. Thanks. Thank you.